Okay, now we are going to comment on the latest articles that have been published uh, in the PHP Passes blog, many interesting tutorials, uh, menus for articles. So let's comment those that were published on May. Uh, Arthur, which ones would you like? Let me start. Uh, so the first article, I would like to comment on is how to turn your WordPress site into more than a blog with uh, the Easy Content Types plugin. So it's an article by Elma Dilavarge from Bosnia and Herzegovina. I think she mostly writes WordPress articles. I remember her from previous podcasts. And yes, please yeah. continue. Sure. Do you want to say anything about her? Sorry? Did you want to say anything about her? No, she has been working, uh, I mean, writing these articles are what plugins from the same company that uh, develops those uh, plugins that we comment before. Yeah. Okay. So, as you mostly of you know, that the WordPress is a blogging platform where when you create blogs, uh, blog entries, but of course it can be something more. You can create new content or page types. Most, In most cases for each of the type that you want to create, you would need to have to create specific plugin and define the fields and, and, and stuff like that. And um, in this article they present one very neat plugin called Easy Content Types which actually allows you to do exactly that. It allows you to uh, create new uh, content types, new pages, so your WordPress becomes not simply a blog platform, but more like a website with some specific contents or, 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 or forums or anything you can think of. Um, so here, here it describes what the Easy Content Plugin is and how to install it and all the features. And basically, it consists of three main main things that you define. One is the post types, uh, is exactly what would be in this custom, your custom page and your custom post, which, which field would it be. Um, other is uh, meta boxes, which is basically a form, I think, that was usually used in uh, admin panels. Uh, that for some configurations, so it would generate form where you can provide some uh, options. Uh, you can define user access controls or who can access, who can post there, uh, and stuff like that. And I think there was also a taxonomy, which is like grouping of posts. So, uh, like, will there be tags or will they be grouped by something else and stuff like that? So, it's. Uh, Actually, uh, very versatile usage, and uh, I think I, I I don't even know I have not seen the plugin that would actually be the, this versatile that you could use and transform your WordPress to any website that you want. So now I'm just wondering if this plugin is free or not. I don't know. Have you checked it? Um, I think this one is paid. Probably, uh, the, the other, I think the previous ones that she wrote about were, were free with freemium versions. Uh, and this one is paid, but okay. Yeah, it's still, but, but you know, yeah, it's actually suits many cases that you want to do. Uh, I think it's quite great, and if you already know WordPress, want to continue using it, but using it for something more, then such plugin would be great. Exactly. Okay. Next um, article I wanted to mention is PHP 7 migration guide. Part this is part four. We already commented on the previous part, and so it will discuss again a couple of more features. It was written by Atif Shahab Wareshi from uh, Pakistan. Okay, so and uh, 
well, as you know, there are many changes uh, and new features in PHP 7, and this article describes uh, new classes in, uh, in interfaces like Intel, which is international extension for internationalization. Uh, then where you can uh, encode text and perform uh, operations for different wall keys and date and time formats and stuff like that. And there is also into char uh, class when for manipulation with Unicode characters. I think we already discussed also in some RFCs. Uh, about into a chart class in, in case of detecting and coding, or, I think, or something like that. Uh, the uh, reflection, uh, which reflection API that would allow you to basically uh, introspect the code, the get all the functions of the class, list all the uh, parameters and stuff like that. Uh, I don't know how limited was the version in previous PHP or, or, or was it even there, but here this article discusses all the possibilities that reflection can do in PHP 7 specifically. Uh, then again, the session handling also have changed. Uh, yeah, session handling existing for some time now, but there is a thing mentioned like session update timestamp handler interface is a new thing that was introduced in PHP 7. They could give a little more information on that or at least provide the link, but well, yeah. It also mentions that there are changes like that. Then there is an exception hierarchy that uh, some exceptions that you may uh, may occur in your PHP 7 code and errors and also throwables. So always yeah. here. It's a big list, actually. It is inspired in some other list that is on PHP site. I'm not sure if it is about migration or something between the older and new versions. So basically, cover that and explain a bit more about uh, those important things. Yeah, and the new constant, global constants that are reserved uh, by PHP, uh, and I think the, the important one is core constant in PHP 7 is PHP int mean. No, okay, it's not that, but oh, yeah, as you see, this is one that the core constant and others are defined by the modules, uh, different libraries that you might use, and stuff like that. So, all this is the fourth article covering all the changes in PHP 7. As you see, there are lots of changes, lots of things to cover, and it's hard to describe all of them in one or even multiple articles. OK, next article is Get the Coding Jump You Want by Manuel Lemos from Portugal, as usual, in Brazil. Yeah, that's where I was born, so. Uh, yeah, that's your own. Sure. When you move to another country, which country you sh should say you are coming from? Uh, it's sometimes we have to choose. Anyway, uh, this article, uh, are you going to comment it or is that is up? Yeah, yes, yes, of course. I'm so I think it's a sponsored by Hierarchy, right? Yes. Yeah. So there are tips on. on, on uh, when you are looking for a job, specific coding job, on what you should do, uh, like uh, tip one, be transparent. It mentions that while sometimes it may seem it's better to keep quiet and not not tell about your other opportunities or stuff like that, but actually being transparent and being open to your possible employers. Uh, and uh, talking about uh, your other opportunities would benefit you, you yeah. know, and also make it clear to the employer that uh, they are not your last hope <laughs> and that you have other options too. And uh, what I like actually about this article that it also provides an examples in, in kind of small emails that how you can subtly mention to them something like that or how, or just an example how to do it in the email. So that was an interesting point. 
The second one is be upfront, of course. Uh, there are lots of things to discuss when you're looking for a job. One of the most important probably would be your job salary. And the main point here is not to leave it all on the last negotiation part when you're already accepting the job, but try to negotiate and find out all the things beforehand in first, first interviews and stuff like that. So, and to do that, at first you must put uh, your specific goals when you're looking for a job. So what is your goal? To earn more money or to work on something interesting or to have a job near your home or the stuff like that. Put it in the points and then be upfront with your uh, possible employers and interviews saying, yeah, uh, saying I prioritize this feature over that feature. And uh, even if you want to work at these companies and some, some things does not really uh, be uh, like in, in, not in your goal list or not what you expect them to be. You can also ne always negotiate and try to get a better deal or, or try uh, to pers persuade them to change the deal. Uh, because if you leave it all to the last interview, it would can turn out bad for both of you. They expecting you already to get the job or you expecting to get the job and. The, then all the details come out and you understand that it's, it's, this job is not for you, for example. Yes. So be upfront with what you want, understand what you want. And again, it mentions in the email how you can write subtle email mentioning a heads up and stuff like that. Yeah, so I probably already run in, in, in the tip freeze about the priorities uh, too here. And uh, as the last tip, the key to success is start optimizing before the final negotiation. Again, I let also say, I, I also already mentioned about it. Um, and I think they also mentioned about hired, how they can find new jobs, and in which cases uh, there are mentions like at hired, we provide a starting point for salary, every role, and stuff like that. So even if you don't have any experience or you don't know your worth, then Companies like Hired can really help you to start and to not get uh, too bad of a deal or, or, or anything like that. Uh, anything you want to mention on this one? Uh, no, it's basically what you cover. It is even interesting that you gave your opinion on uh, what you would do or not do, but uh, the, basically the, the idea is to get you some tips to uh, uh, getting ready to get a, a, a job because many people are looking for jobs but they are not quite aware of what is necessary what recruiting companies are looking for so I think uh, the, the the article aims to help clarifying that with uh, the help of this uh, uh, sponsor which is hired a company that has offices in many places and is looking always for PHP developers to actually uh, come on board and to apply to the great jobs that they have. Okay, and the next article I wanted to mention is uh, it's actually quite interesting article. I was shocked I didn't know about that before but it's about how to contribute to PHP development, writing PHP T tests. Uh, so the author is Marcos PTF from Brazil. I don't know the real name, but okay, it's obviously you know, username. So turns out there is a specific PHP T test format that is used internally uh, by core PHP developers that we usually comment at PHP podcast that the, the, yeah. the re releases and their RFCs and uh, each of the features are tested with exactly this PHP T format test. Uh, so as I understood, it's a simple PHP kind of script, but with a PHP T extension when then when run gets constructed into PHP test and the results compared to, again with your part, part of the PHP T test, test that you have written. And there are also lots of conventions to follow, like is it test for specific bug reported or is it basic test functionality? 
and stuff like that. So uh, it was developed from the early days, maybe of BHP. Basically, it's re really old, and there are lots, lots of lots of tests already uh, in BHP. That's why the naming convention and, and other convention stuff are really important. But basically, I really did not know that. Even if you don't know much about PHP or cores or C++ or anything like that, but you only know PHP, you want to contribute, this is actually a really great way to do that because everyone kind of hates writing tests. I, I, well, probably someone enjoys it, but I think most of us do, do hate writing tests, but we need to write them. We need to have stable software. So. Uh, this kind of job, if you are willing to do it, would be great help. Uh, it would be even better if they would post maybe um, some sections of the PHP code that should be tested or specific functions or, or, or bugs or anything like that. So people would come here to this article, learn about PHPT and how to construct them, and then they already would have certain Wings to follow to write tests for and try to write tests for and stuff like that. Yeah, but basically, if you are willing to contribute in that way, then check out this article it describes a lot and how it works, how to run it, and all the conventions and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, well, um, this is uh, actually interesting uh, because um, well, first, PHPT is a format that is intended for creating tests for the core PHP development. Uh, for the regular PHP code, many people use a, a PHP unit or a, or maybe other framework. It's not important. The important is, uh, is that uh, uh, it addresses the need for testing uh, important things. And uh, uh, But for the core PHP, um, the development, you need to know the, the PHP uh, T format and how to submit tests. One interesting thing is that despite you can uh, you can write tests for PHP features without n having to know the C language on which most PHP uh, is written. Yeah, exactly. So uh, this this is interesting uh, because uh, what um, some people can do, uh, and I think it was the intention of the the, the author Marcus, uh, he wanted to give back to the community uh, as a means to thank thanks for all the things that PHP provides. And um, he also teach others how to also contribute with um, uh, with the PHP development. Uh, you can just create tests for bugs or features that uh, uh, need to be uh, need tests to all verify that uh, the features always work. So it was a great contribution, and uh, I hope those that are motivated to write tests to give back to the PHP community found this article interesting. Okay. Uh, did you comment on all articles? Uh, yeah, I think you just found the list of the functions that are not tested that you actually can write tests for. So even better. No, oh, I'm just so checking the article. Yeah, I think that I'm done with the articles, so that's all for me for now. Okay, so on my behalf, I also like to comment on a few articles. Um, let me share the screen here first. Starting this uh, tutorial, which is actually a second part of a uh, tutorial that was started by Cyril Organa from Kenya and uh, to talk about how to take advantage of uh, PHP add uh, IDE to uh, debug your uh, PHP applications. And in this case, he created a, 
a sort of a, a, um, application with uh, using Symfony framework, and then it goes through all the steps that you need to do to debug or, or using watches, breakpoints, uh, conditional breakpoints, and um, so he presented the, the, the article with lots of screenshots. And uh, there is, um, there are plenty of screenshots and for all the steps. And he presented a case on which he, he wanted to debug some some problem with routing the the requests. And uh, so he gave all the tips so where you could. Um, start to debug your problems like uh, uh, putting breakpoints on uh, the, the, the specific uh, points of your application that could be used and um, and basically th that's it he also mentions that um, uh, uh, despite it, this was used for to debug browser based applications uh, it can it can also uh, be used for debugging CLI applications, but there will be a, a third part that I'm still waiting for him to finish. That um, he will explain that more in detail. So another article that I want to comment is an this one an article sponsored by Indeed. Indeed as a, a prime Indeed as a, a, a company that. Uh, uh, aggregates jobs and can um, can um, also I think they also do recruiting and do recruiting for uh, very high profile companies uh, and so they give all the tips uh, that for instance if you are a developer that uh, on wants to get a, a job in you know, those um, companies that they call elite you you can go through uh, 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 a process on which you uh, can uh, sign up uh, uh, on this um, indeed prime program that they, they call it and uh, if you get uh, uh, hired you even get a bonus of five thousand dollars. Of course, this is very specific to to the United States, but um, I think this is still interesting for whoever is looking for a job in these places. Another another interesting article. This one from again uh, Alma de la Regate, but, but uh, it is about a, a different. Uh, product actually it's a new product from IP to location you know IP to location that is uh, that provides those um, databases yeah. or web services to determine the location of uh, a certain user uh, by IP address yep. so they, they provide this uh, service and now they are I think they have a new type of database that also includes Information about which which uh, IP addresses are proxies, and uh, they keep that information updated frequently. So you would need to actually update the databases quickly. And this is basic to make it harder for people that uh, uh, try to uh, you know, cause some harm in sites like hacking or posting spam or and uh, but they usually when they do those bad things they hide behind proxies and the article is interesting because not only it uh, tells all the server source but it also tells all the types of proxies and uh, i thought this is very interesting especially this part of the types of proxies talk talks about the tor network i know the tor network i don't use it because this is specifically to help people that for some reason want to hide I have nothing to hide, but uh, but some people m may use it because it uses a lot of encryption between different routers, and you don't know 
uh, what was the route that the, the packets passed before actually uh, uh, reaching a certain server. Then there are other other types of proxy that they describe here, I'm not going through them here, but um, what it is important is uh, IP to proxy product that uh, they have now is uh, uh, available uh, uh, and can uh, tell you which uh, IP addresses correspond to those types of proxies. And uh, so the article is interesting because it shows how you can use it uh, from the command line. And also in the end, it tells you that uh, if you don't want to install the database, just like with the, with the IP to location, you can use the, the proxy detection web service. So just a REST, regular REST API. So this is just for uh, uh, this article, which, which is interesting. Another interesting article, this one from Samuel Adishina, who, which has published an interesting package that allows you to sort of script the installation of a database, um, uh, defining tables, uh, views, uh, indexes, uh, uh, storage procedures, and so, and he defined a sort of a, a language based on the JSON uh, uh, syntax that you can define the steps that you want to install your database. And then he, he, the, the package can uh, generate the necessary SQL um, uh, statements to implement that script that you define it. And uh, this is uh, quite interesting and can be helpful for people that want to automate their process of, of uh, installing databases. Uh, finally, one interesting article is uh, from Viktor Volchow from Russia. It is uh, written inside the blog of his package tinyphporm, and basically what he uh, talks about is uh, the good and bad things about the current uh, uh, ORM tools. So basically, he, he, he mentions uh, uh, things that uh, you should do and also suggesting things you should not do. Uh, I'm not going through the, the article in detail, but I think it is very interesting. It raises lots of comments and also raises a confusion because uh, in this his initial article, in, uh, he has this polemic statement, FET models can be attractive, but not in the case of ORM. And, uh, and then he posted a picture of a FET model, which happens to be a person uh, that is FET and is posing as model. So it was uh, uh, a pun, not, uh, not exactly to insult uh, FET people, actually, he even says that fat people can be attractive, but uh, what he wanted to say is that fat models uh, in ORM are, are not not uh, very attractive. Not uh, those that have many functions. Uh, those model model classes that uh, some ORM generate or make you write. Uh, um, are not interesting because they probably have a lot more code than it, it, it is not unnecessary. For instance, gives an example here. Some, he has already probably found somewhere that there was a model that was doing formatting of something, a title for a newsletter. So this is, should not be the role of the model. This is probably the view code. And um, 
that is basically what he meant by fat models are, are in the ORM world are not uh, uh, attractive. I mean, it's not a good idea. And then uh, he mentions that uh, after this, he mentions his own package and um, tiny ORM, and uh, it is uh, interesting for you to check it out because uh, it is uh, not exactly small, but uh, it's smaller than many ORM packages that there's like many files actually some files are not the package itself are just examples and uh, basically the idea is to demonstrate uh, uh, his concepts in this article So basically, we this reached the end of the articles for this month. I hope to comment on many other articles, interesting articles next month. And just also give a reminder to everybody that wants to write articles. You can either write articles for the PHP classes blog or even JS classes if you have any JavaScript related posts. And you can also, if you post a package, uh, on on the site, you can also write posts about the, that package, and it helps you to get more visibility. Uh, if you flag those posts as featured, and um, of course the posts have to be have to have some depth, could not be simple posts. But if the posts are useful, they will be reviewed and uh, uh, approved for application for publication. So, with this, uh, we end this uh, podcast on my behalf. That is all for now. Bye. Bye.